The inflammatory response is initiated within hours of infection or wounding and is triggered by physical damage to tissues or the presence of pathogens. During inflammation, there is cytokine release, vasodilation, and recruitment of leukocytes. Cytokines are substances secreted by cells of the immune system that affect other cells. Chemokines are a type of cytokine that induce directed movement of cells. Vasodilation is the dilation of blood vessels. So now we get to the topic of this video. How do the leukocytes enter inflamed tissues? Usually, leukocytes travel in the center of blood vessels since this is where blood flows the fastest. So the first step of leukocyte recruitment into infected tissues is dilation of blood vessels, resulting in slower blood flow. This allows leukocytes to interact with the vascular endothelium. Now, leukocytes need to actually stick to the blood vessel walls. During inflammation, cytokines cause changes in the adhesion molecules on the endothelial cells, as well as the adhesion molecules expressed by leukocytes. Three kinds of adhesion molecules are important for leukocyte recruitment. Selectins, intracellular adhesion molecules, or ICAMs, and leukocyte integrins. Selectins are membrane glycoproteins that bind specific carbohydrate groups. They are expressed on activated endothelium and initiate endothelium leukocyte interactions by binding to fucosylated oligosaccharide ligands on passing leukocytes. ICAMs are single-pass membrane proteins that allow for tighter adhesion of the leukocytes to the endothelium. Leukocyte integrins are composed of two transmembrane protein chains, alpha and beta, of which there are numerous types. Subsets of integrins have a common beta chain partnered with different alpha chains. Leukocyte integrins important for extravasation are alpha-L-beta-2 and alpha-M-beta-2, which can bind to both ICAM-1 and ICAM-2. Integrins also allow for the convenient distinguishing of different cell types. Dendritic cells, macrophages, and monocytes feature different integrin alpha chains and thus display distinct beta-2 integrins on their surface. The migration of leukocytes out of blood vessels is called extravasation. Extravasation has four steps, rolling adhesion, tight binding, diapedesis, and migration. 1. Rolling adhesion. The initially weak adhesion between leukocytes and the vascular endothelium involves selectins. The two important types of selectins are P-selectin and E-selectin. P-selectin appears on the endothelial cell surface within minutes of exposure to histamine, which is released by mast cells, or exposure of the endothelium to TNF-alpha or LPS. TNF-alpha is one kind of cytokine produced by macrophages upon pathogen detection and causes endothelial activation. Activated endothelial cells rapidly externalize granules called weibel pallid bodies, which contain preformed P-selectin. TNF-alpha and LPS also induce the synthesis of a second selectin, E-selectin, which appears on the endothelial cell surface a few hours later. These selectins recognize the sulfated Cialo-Lewis X moiety of certain leukocyte glycoproteins. P-selectin and E-selectin interact with these glycoproteins, allowing the leukocytes to adhere reversibly to the vessel wall, so they can roll along the endothelium. Without this initial weak adhesion, the stronger adhesion in the next step in extravasation can't happen. 2. Tight binding. Tight binding relies on interactions between leukocyte integrins and adhesion molecules on the endothelium, such as ICAM-1, which can be induced on endothelial cells by TNF-alpha, and ICAM-2. Leukocyte integrins normally bind their ligands only weakly, but chemokines bound to proteoglycans on the surface of endothelial cells bind to specific chemokine receptors on the leukocyte and signal the cell to trigger a conformational change in the integrins on the rolling leukocyte, greatly increasing the adhesive abilities of the leukocyte. As a result, the leukocyte can attach firmly to the endothelium and the rolling stops. Diapedesis. In this step, the leukocyte extravasates or crosses the endothelial wall. This again involves the leukocyte integrins, as well as further adhesive interactions involving an immunoglobulin-related molecule called PCAM, or CD31, expressed both on the leukocyte and at the intercellular junctions of endothelial cells. Next, the leukocyte penetrates the basement membrane with the aid of enzymes that break down extracellular matrix proteins. The movement through the basement membrane is known as diapedesis, and once the leukocyte has crossed it, it is now in the subendothelial tissues. 4. Migration. 
Migration of leukocytes through tissues occurs under the influence of chemokines produced at the site of the infection. A concentration gradient of chemokines is formed, along which the leukocyte can migrate to the focus of infection. To end off, note that even in uninfected regions of the body, circulating monocytes are continuously leaving the blood and entering tissues, where they become resident macrophages. They do so when they adhere to ICAM2, which is expressed at low levels by unactivated endothelium. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. You can also support me by following the link to my Patreon. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment.